Hi, welcome into BCTD Now, your Union Construction News video for the week of March 5th, 2012. In the unlikely event that you've been living under a rock recently, election season is now starting to pick up. And in every cycle, it's easy to get lost in all the rhetoric and promises being tossed around by potential candidates as they seek support of various groups of voters. So to make sure that the building trades, their councils, local union leaders, and rank and file members are up to date with what's going on, we will periodically, between now and Election Day, devote entire editions of BCTD Now to examining the views and positions of each of the major candidates. We hope that this will enable all of you to better discern whether the candidates running for the office of president of the United States of America will either be good for the union construction or bad. Today, we shine a spotlight upon Mitt Romney. Despite being the most deep-pocketed candidate in the Republican field, Romney has been having reoccurring difficulty in separating himself from his competitors. Although he won last week's primaries in Michigan and Arizona, new polling shows him having trouble in the all-important state of Ohio, where Republicans will cast their votes this week. Of particular note for America's building trades unions is the fact that an unlikely campaign issue has now come to the forefront for Romney. On February 23rd, candidate Romney enthusiastically accepted the endorsement of the Associated Builders and Contractors. During his remarks to the ABC, Romney had this to say, If I become president of the United States, I will curb the practice we have in this country of giving union bosses an unfair advantage in contracting. He went on to say that one of the first things I'll do, actually on day one, is I'll end the government's favoritism towards unions and contracting on federal projects and end project labor agreements, and I will fight to repeal the Davis-Bacon Act. Not surprisingly, this got a standing ovation from the anti-union ABC crowd. But here's where the story gets a little interesting. As most of you know, Mitt Romney is a devout Mormon. He was also at one time the governor of Massachusetts. And during his time in the Bay State, the local Mormon community was looking to construct a new and larger place of worship in the greater Boston area. As a leading elder in the Mormon church, Romney took on the responsibility of finding a way to construct this facility in the most cost-effective manner possible. So what did he do? He spearheaded the negotiation of agreements to build this new church with 100% union labor. But the story of Romney's current hypocrisy when it comes to unions doesn't just end in Massachusetts. Fast forward to the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City, Utah. Mitt Romney was the chairman of these Olympic Games, and as the opening of the Games drew near, the Olympic Committee realized they had a major problem on their hands. They needed to make substantial improvements to Interstate 15 in order to handle the expected surge in traffic heading to Salt Lake City for the Games. And they needed those improvements to be done quickly and efficiently. Unfortunately, the Utah Department of Transportation estimated at the time that the reconstruction of I-15 would not be completed until after the Olympic Games had finished, and it most likely would not be done until 2004. So what did Mitt Romney do? Well, just like anyone who has a pressing need to construct a complicated project quickly and efficiently, with the utmost skill and quality, Mitt Romney led the charge to negotiate a project labor agreement with local building trades unions. That resulted in the I-15 project being completed before the opening of the games. And he could not contain his joy and appreciation for the quality work that was displayed by the skilled union men and women of Utah's building trades unions, not only on the Interstate 15 project, but on all the high quality work these men and women contributed to the Salt Lake Olympic Games. In fact, the IBEW has a video on its website that shows Mitt Romney offering high praise to that union and its president, Ed Hill, and locals 57 and 354 for all their hard work wiring the Olympic rings and the 14 venues where the games were held. You can view the video for yourself simply by logging on to www.ibew.org and proceed to the news and publications page. So it was just a bit ironic to see Mitt Romney the other week standing on that stage in Arizona bashing unions, PLAs, and prevailing wage laws. I guess pandering is what we should expect from certain politicians, especially those like Mitt Romney who are still trying to establish their bona fides with their party's base. But what Romney fails to realize is that while the ABC's endorsement has captured a few scattered headlines, he is sadly misinformed if he thinks it will translate in any kind of measurable on-the-ground grassroots support. And that's because the ABC represents only a measly 0.03% of all U.S. construction businesses. And of those 23,000 which make up the 0.03%, 
quote unquote construction related members that the ABC claims to represent. There are 59 banks, scores of insurance companies, a handful of restaurants, and even a florist. All in all, I guess you could say that Mitt Romney is like the weather in Massachusetts. If you don't like it, just wait 10 minutes and it'll change. Now it's okay when it comes to the weather, but is that really what we want in a president? Eventually, it will be up to you to decide. Now on to a bit of good news to leave you with this week, and it too involves Republican politicians pandering to the paper tiger that is the ABC and trying to eliminate project labor agreements. Only this time, they've been slapped down in a court of law. Last year, Republicans in the Michigan State Legislature rammed through a bill which Republican Governor Rick Snyder dutifully signed into law that would effectively scare local governing authorities from entering into PLAs. But just last week, a federal district court permanently enjoined the law because it violated the rights of labor unions under the National Labor Relations Act. So that's a bit of good news for Michigan this week. And with that, we say so long. Please follow us on Facebook and see what President Ayers is saying on Twitter. As always, whether through your smartphone, tablet, or your computer, the building trades is always on. See you next week.